Howdy, beautiful bird here, and welcome. Yeah, I know. Been a while since I've done any kind of videos on Unreal Engine 4. Kind of just playing around in my head with some some ideas and such. Um, top down wise, and no, I won't. will be keeping the character or anything like that. Um, with the top down. Kind of been toying with the ideas of like a, an RTS game, things of that nature. Um, but when you guys come up with ideas and uh, things you want to see, and you guys have been quiet, so the hell with you then. And I'm just gonna screw around with whatever. So this is just a blank uh, top down template, loaded up a, uh, a test project to kind of play around with stuff. Um, not multiplayer. Uh, I have done some top-down multiplayer with limited success, but I'm just going to stick with single player for right now. And what I'd like to do is play around with the concept of spawning things. So we've already got the um, the cross here, and you can see wherever I'm moving my mouse, I get this nice cursor, and I can left-click and go there, but what would happen if we held down like the shift key? Maybe change the color of the, the crosshair from green to red, and then left click on it, and if that's the case, then we'll have a shift left click event instead of a regular left click event. So, we'll take a look at the, uh, the player and see what's set up in there, and what is actually set up as yeah, the um, the key bindings, top-down character, event begin play. I'm not using a head-mounted display and all that stuff, but I'm not going to worry about taking it out for right now. It's kind of pointless because it gives you an extra camera and what have you. Um, I don't see where VR would be all that great for this anyway, so I don't know why it's even in here. Um, all this is for head-mounted display. So this is actually for your mouse. So um, this line tray stuff is just for the head-mounted display. So I am going to go ahead and get rid of it. I just, I don't need it. And it's running on the event tick. So why even bother? And we don't even need that branch. We can just bring this up here. And since we're running that off of the event tick, that needs to go into here. So I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. I It just it bothers me that uh, I'm not going to use it. And yeah, I'm old and weird and set in my ways. So I am just going to clean it up, get rid of the head mounted display crap. We don't need anything from that. So we can actually get rid of the event begin play for now. Um, What else do we have here? We don't need you. We don't need that camera and that spring arm. And that should clean up our blueprint to just nothing. Okay. So this tells me here that um, it's going to get the player controller, get hit result under cursor by channel. Let me zoom in a little bit more. Um, break hit results. It's going to, we have cursor to world there. All right, so yeah, make rotation from axes, A-X-E-S. Yes, I've been corrected before that that's actually a thing, but you would think it's axis, A-X-I-S, but whatever. 
Um, set world location and rotation. So basically what it's going to do is this is controlling our where our mouse cursor is. When we initiate, it's going to kick it off. So, and save that, and that tells me that um, if we go into Edit, Project Settings, and yes, it's good to do it this way. This gives you a global mapping for your key. We're going to go to Input, and if we look at Action Mappings, Reset VR, we don't need that, but we have Set Destination left mouse button, motion controller, right trigger, we don't need you, and because I'm old and an ass, I don't need gamepad, anything, so left mouse button, just standard left mouse button. And then WASDA, WSTs, I'm not going to mess with that. So, when we hit play, yeah, okay, so Control Z. Let's undo this so we can get our camera back. Um, our viewport. If we look at it, we've got two cameras. What camera is this one? We have two cameras here. Camera one and VR camera. Well, let's put them back in there and hit play again. Yep, we killed it. Um, let's actually... This one is probably set to... Not to auto-activate, and this one isn't. Let's try auto-activating that camera. Yay! At least we have the control Z. Input action VR. Oh, uh, okay. It's auto-activating that. So if, that should bring us back to where we were. Okay, so uh, we don't need that information. So before I delete it, even though I can pull it back up again, let's just go ahead and try running it to here. All right, so we're we're back to normal again there. So we don't need this crap. We don't need that crap. Um, camera one will auto activate that one. That way we shouldn't need to run that. There we go. All right, so now we can get rid of this shit that we don't need. Now, in theory, we're cleaned up and working, and now we don't need that and that. There, we're cleaned up and everything works. All right not a problem. So, what we're doing with this, or what they're doing with this, is running off the event tick. It's getting all this information right here. Um, but, cursor to the world. Okay, it's a decal component. And, of course, looking in here, we can see his ankles are green. 
and that's where the decal is and even though we haven't changed anything on the map whatsoever it's telling us we needed to, to save it um, character so we've got a blueprint for our decal it is a material okay so radio gradient you guys know I am not at all an expert on messing with materials so I am not going to screw with that just as of yet um, for now we'll leave the um, the fact that we are doing this but what I would eventually like to do is go into this material set a material instance uh, set it to where um, yeah that right there which is my color which is that green I would like to be able to change that out to a different color but I'm not going to worry about it just yet so let's do um, left mouse button but I'm going to make a, a quick change to that shift modifier on there so left shift or shift key and then left mouse button what do we have in here as of assets to work with nothing why does it tell me to save the map I have not changed anything on the map whatsoever but it's telling me that because I've modified my character I have to change the map alright so let's go ahead and create an assets folder and inside the assets we're going to do mesh for right now what I'm going to do is create a object something that I can spawn whenever I, I shift left click <sighs> a blueprint actor test object so our test object is going to be add a component we are going to make it a stir we're going to do this bring it up a little bit and just for giggles um, simply physics so what we want to do is have this in the map and let's see what it looks like we we'll grab one throw it in here I want it to be there so when we place it it just drops down on the ground um, we can interact in right now by running into it um, we could turn off that physics I mean, hell, if you're sitting here wanting to make a, a soccer game, oh, there you go. Maybe add um, radial force, like for a kick movement or whatever. You never know. I mean, the hell, this is just screwing around seeing what we can come up with. But what we're wanting to do for right now is I want to spawn that. Um, we can actually, just so we don't have a, a shitload of them in here, Let's go ahead and do a set live span. And we'll set that at whatever, five seconds. So we'll go in here, begin play. Five seconds after it's created, it'll just despawn. That way we're not loading up the map with a bunch of them. All right, so our shift left click. We're going to use the same basic system as this right here of in fact we can actually copy this if we wanted to but we want to get player controller from get player controller we're going to do the same thing they did there get hit result under and what are they 
under cursor of my channel git hit result under cursor by channel all right so that's going to let us to break hit results and what I've done is we're making rotation from accident we're not worried about that um, we're not going to set our location and rotation and we don't need that so what we're going to do is spawn actor from class and we'll do that is this so we'll do shift left click is going to spawn this now we need to transform and the transform we don't actually have a transform here everything is if you look at your colors yellows versus an orange so let's go ahead and do our test object is what we're going to spawn and we're going to drag off from there and we're going to make transform okay so we're going to make that transform from the location hell we're not going to mess with scale it's going to put that there and it's going to yeah so as we do this shift left click it's still going to move us here because we have that that binding So let's actually try putting this in as a right-click event because it does not like my shift input there. Go back to here and we'll change this to right mouse button. Uncheck shift. Okay. So now we right click wherever we right click now it's going to spawn that it's going to live for five seconds and delete itself you can throw them on top of each other throw them up here wherever um, that doesn't interfere with our left click because the the left click is set to um, bind by the norm here so if we look at again in the project settings and input because they bound it in there I thought I killed you go away go away um, so yeah left mouse button to set destination so that's actually put in somewhere else um, I don't normally do it that way Yeah, you could set other parameters like, okay, I only want there to be one spawned and that kind of stuff. And it doesn't have to have physics either, you know. That's the other thing too, is you could set, I want to snap to a grid location, like I was kind of screwing around with the, uh, the Minecraft idea of being able to place blocks down. And whenever I did that, I was using a um, snap to grid. Um there were some other things that I needed to add to it because the way that it was working it will work to stack the bricks ne or blocks next to each other but only in two different ways like it's hard to explain without going back and watching the video or showing you in person here so we've created an object we can spawn just by right clicking The idea of I was going to set this up as a um, eh, disappeared. And change the lifespan too. Um, you don't have to have a lifespan on it at all. I just put it on there so that it wouldn't disappear. You know, if, if we just break that for right now, it will not despawn. So if you were trying to do this as a, um, uh, if you want to make a, a soccer game or something like that. Now, haven't changed the, uh, the scale of it, so let's actually change the scale of our sphere, and let's change it to 
I don't know, point two five. Doesn't have to be up in the air either. A little bit on the small side, but see now you're wanting to step on top of it, so it's a little bit too small. So yeah, whatever. I mean, if you wanted to do a soccer game, this would probably be okay. Um, but then you got to create AI and all that kind of stuff, and that's just you know beyond the scope of what I'm trying to do here. All right. So with that, let's see what happens if we do that again. Right mouse button and try to shift. So if you right click, nothing happens. Shift, right click, and now what happens? Um, I guess because of the left mouse button being attached to the other thing, it was what was preventing me from actually using the left mouse button there. So I can hold down the left shift key, or, or right shift key, either one right now, and um, spawn as many as I want. But I will go back into here and give him a lifespan. So what do we want to see here? What do you want to do? What do you want to see? There's other things you can do as well as uh, set it up to where if there is something spawned there, it gets the hit results and if it is an actor then you know tell it not to spawn anything but essentially that's the the nuts and bolts of just getting it to and I'm gonna take off the shift key getting something to spawn under your cursor now if you're trying to shoot something that's different um, you'd want to spawn an actor and the actor would then be a projectile um, so we could do that as we'll say F key let's see what happens which we'll come back to our character and save all save selected and we'll make another test object here which will be a blueprint actor um, bullet another component another sphere 0.25 Make this kind of small. Compose, save, vent, um, vent begin play. We'll work from that. Um, we'll also add in projectile movement. Not erectile, but projectile. I want to make sure we're clear on that. All right. Uh, yeah, I've been going through, and one of the other reasons why I've been going out of my mind not doing videos. Um, Try to think of what I can do to try to be different, do something different with the videos, do something different with the streams or whatever. And I watch some other people's channels, and some people just get over the top with their enunciations. Of, all right, and then we're going to do this, you know. And they get all happy and shit and overexcited, and you know what? That's not me. I'm a grumpy old bastard, and I'm going to do shit a certain way, <laughs> you know. It may not be as fun, it may not be as exciting, but the more you guys, the, the people viewing, actually engage in the conversation, I've got three monitors. So I've got Discord up on the right, I've got the uh, stream software up on the left, I see a chat box. So I can respond to chat, usually about a three or four second delay from a time, you, or sometimes more, thanks to my crappy internet, um, from whenever you guys post a question in the YouTube chat before I see it and then I can respond to it. So if there's a delay, it's not just me being old and crap, it's just the normal delay. Alright, so projectile movement. Um, initial speed. We're going to put this meh. Moderate speed. Um not going to mess with gravity and crap like that just yet. May come back to it. 
I'm sure we're going to make some changes to it. And we're going to hit the F key this time. And it's going to be the same basic principle here of where we're wanting to shoot it from. We also need a spawn location. So where are we going to spawn it from? So if we look at our character, we can add in a sphere. Not a sphere. Um, not a sphere collision. This is actually the first time I've fired up uh, a scene component. Uh, Unreal Engine 4. Since the last time I did a video, probably. Um, scene, we'll do this. Um, spawn, or whatever. So it's going to be right there. I'm just going to move it up. That should be fine. Now, looking at all this stuff right here, here's a couple different things we can do. Is We need a spawn location um, of where it's going to spawn from, which is going to be spawn actor from class. And we're going to use that transform. Well, let's just go ahead and do it. We're going to use keyboard F. From there, we are going to spawn actor from class. Even though it has no class. The thing we're going to do is we're going to spawn a bullet. Spawn transform. We need to go ahead and get our spawner. Lack of a better word here. Um, not what I want. I have it in my brain of what I want and how I want to do this. Because what I want to do is... If I do this right now, you'll see what I'm talking about here in just a second. It's, it's going to spawn it from there. It's not going to have the rotation or anything like that. And we'll come back to that. It's not that hard to put it in there. But right now, whenever we hit the F key, we're going to just spawn this. And let's close the bullet up for now. So we start. We can walk around still. We can right click and spawn a ball in here. Hit F. It spawned it that direction. So it's spawning in the direction that I want. Might actually speed it up. Now, another thing we need to do in our bullet, we need to make sure that we give it a lifespan because we don't want them just staying forever. Set lifespan. And we're going to set a lifespan of whatever. Three seconds. So now, whatever we're facing, whatever direction we're facing is the direction that's going to, and see, it's it's going to go through these. We're not worried about the collisions and stuff like that just yet here. But it doesn't have anything to do with where I'm I'm pointing my mouse cursor. If I want to shoot at this wall, I have to click to face it, but then it's going to cause me to run towards it. I don't want to do that. I wanted to take the input of where my mouse is aimed. It then needs to face me in that direction whenever I hit the F key, and then fire in that direction instead of just firing straight all the time. You see the actors go up, and that just go down. So, if we look at how we did this up here, we've got our player controller, get our hit result under cursor by channel, got our hit result, and we got our transform because we made a transform. And if we look at it up here as well, we're setting our location and rotation. Well, we just want to set our rotation. So, let's see if we can get that to work. So we know this is working. It's spawning our, our, our target. But we want this to come after we're facing in the right direction. So we're just going to 
for now, break hat, and we're going to move it out of the way. We'll bring it back. So, again, this is what we're doing here is we're going to get our player controller, and I'm just going to go ahead and copy it. Actually, we can grab all of it, except for that. Because we're doing the same thing. And connect this in to here. And our rotation, you see what was. We made our rotation from axes. Um, oh, shit, I didn't mean to put that in there. Um, yeah, move out of the way. You're getting me confused. Okay, so it's drawing from cursor to world. So let's see if I can grab that right there and we'll set ro world rotation. Or do we set relative? Nope, you were setting world. Okay. So if we drag from here and set world rotation, what we're wanting to do is get our character to face the direction of where our crosshair is pointing. The rotation is what we're getting from here. And hopefully, if my IQ is high enough, so now, if I hit F key, it's not doing anything. I can spawn stuff. Okay. Um, hit F. Set world rotation. I want to set my world rotation. Um, so i, I got to have a reference to what I'm actually doing here. And that is going to be self. So I, want to, I don't want to do just the mesh. And I don't think self is going to cut it there either. So we have to have something for our target. What are we rotating? We can't just drag ourselves in that way. Can't do it our, that and that. No, I don't want to get parent component. Because um, if we do just the mesh, it's not going to do what I want. Yeah. Because, see, it does that. Um, Holy crap, has it been that long since I've actually done anything on Unreal Engine 4? Um, wait a minute. Input normal. Make rotation. What? Yeah. Because um, we're setting our forward vector is what we're actually doing. We, we're changing. Oh shit! I'm being totally stupid. Um, <laughs> God, it's been too long. All right, so I'm gonna break this real quick. Um, because whenever I do that, I don't have anything there. I can't target itself. And I need to have a variable set that is us, our character. And you can't target the character movement. I mean, that's just not going to work. And if you set just the mesh, it's not going to target the right thing. So 
and forward and get forward vector isn't going to do what I want. Um, make rotation from axis. Make sure to take that off. Um, because what's happening here is I want to get my hit results of what's what's under the cursor. I want to get that impact point and I'm going to now see I want to set actor rotation. All right. Um Told you it's been a while. And we had that from impact normal. And that's our rotation. Hey. Isn't that awesome? I think that's cool. I like that much better, I think. Um, our rotation. And let's see what it is. It's actually getting the impact normal. It's at an XYZ. If I set my rotation make a rotator and um, we've got our X Y and Z here and this is gonna be the long route but Z y'all yeah so from the impact normal break vector This thing is, everything should be straight across. This should be the thing, but let's see here. Let's see, get axis. That's what we we're using before. Um, get rotation vector x y x v whatever. You know what? So much easier to get player character. Um, so what we're wanting to do is get forward vector and we need to get that from get it from our character movement we can't get it from our player controller get actor forward vector So you find the look at vector this is not going to do what I want to do but what I'm wanting to do is yeah target is the impact normal yeah almost there We're going to get our set our forward vector. 
We can't set forward vector though. Alright, you guys probably know what the hell I'm doing and can easily put me out of my misery here by telling me what I'm doing wrong. Because... What I'm trying to do is get it to where if I'm aiming there, then... Up here, it's cursor to world is setting the world location and rotation. It's moving me. It's setting my location, but it's not setting actor. And if I move these two in here, I'll just grab this. So set world rotation. See, it's wanting all of that information right there. So let's break that. Set world rotation. That's all we're wanting to do is setting our rotation. By the way, that was control left click to drag it down there. And the rotation has got from here Get rid of some of this extra stuff here so it's less confusing. Because this is what we're wanting to do is set our rotation. We don't need you. So that's all we want to do is set our rotation to what we're looking at. So I just want to face that direction, uh, wherever that cursor is pointed. Everything else is fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this sucks. Let's set world rotation. And... Where is it getting this from? So, drop that out. We're really just trying to, hello, set actor rotation is all we're really wanting to do. want to set our rotation. And we're going to have to just change the math around. All right. I will come back to that because it has been a while since Actually, let's keep that out of the way for a minute. So what we're doing... Um, I can come up with a different way of doing this. Because we're getting that information right there.
don't necessarily need to copy and paste it, but get player controller, get hit results under a cursor by channel, break hit results, matrix form, and we're spawning an actor right there. What we're wanting to do is set that as our target location. So probably need to go ahead and when we press the F key, we need to do a line trace. We or we just need to get this information right here. And we need to set that information. So if we press the F key, we need to get hit result under cursor by channel. This hit result then needs to and we need to set that to a variable. Um, we need to, well, break hit result and set the location or the impact normal is our location here. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, we'll do the same thing. We'll get player controller Get hit result under finger. Eh, I don't have a finger. Cursor by channel. So with that, we're going to grab that, hit, get our break re hit result. Okay, you got to move back out of the way again. So we're going to get this right here, and we're going to create a variable target location. And we'll change that to a vector compost and save. We'll bring up this set target location. And back to normal. That is going to be our target location. It's there. So. Spawn actor bullet. So I guess gonna be a whole hell of a lot more mathematics involved in this crap. And uh, when we spawn our bullet, spawn actor. So we're wanting to make this our end hit result. That's our target location. Our world transform is where we're spawning it from, and we're spawning it from directly in front of our face. We're throwing the bullet out, but we need to actually target the location of where, what is under our mouse cursor, which is our current target location. So that current target location is now... We have our line traced by channel, like when we're firing a bullet normally, when we're doing a first-person type shooting thing, when we're, we're setting our spawn location. It's getting that forward vector. It's applying that. Uh, setting a range and everything else to it. So we have our target location. We've, so when we spawn this, we are... Hmm. Yeah, I'm just totally confusing myself here as to what I need to do. And that's the whole thing about this. This stream was not anything in particular. Um... just kind of screwing around with what else I can do besides the normal just walk around and click on shit you know see here's the thing is whenever we're in oh, please compost save we're actually in here playing what happens if we click on or we mouse over an item we need to be able to have a, a uh, like okay an interaction our mouse cursor should then highlight the object and say, okay, this is a ball that we're, we're targeting. But instead, it is waiting for our input off of an event tick, which is running every frame. So if you're running 120 FPS, it's running this 120 times a second. Wouldn't be my first choice of that. So do we really want it setting 
a variable, the target location, every frame? I wouldn't think so. But what it's doing right here is it's getting that information every single solitary frame. And whether we're using anything or not, when we left click, it is then moving us. So this is why I don't like using, you know, other people's stuff. OPS, other people's shit. Our right mouse button's going to spawn. And for now, if we just leave that connected in here, this is just going to fire the bullet. It's not going to aim it at anything. So... wherever we're facing it will fire but I, what I was trying to get it to do was pick up on that information of where my mouse cursor is which is on the ground no matter where I put it it's on a flat surface so if it's here it's on the floor if it's on a wall it's right there But because I'm facing that way but what I want it to do is whenever I'm facing this way I want to face my character but not walk there and by having somebody else's character and using somebody else's stuff, we need to just make our own character. And that would be probably the best thing to do. Because we're using, I said, OPS, other people's shit. And following along with the way that I did the, the tank, where I was creating my own character from essentially blocks and creating a tank out of BSP geometries that I turned into static meshes and, and what have you. Um, what it was is whenever you press the W, it goes forward, A, backwards, you know, WASD, typical WASD controls. So, here, WASD controls do nothing. Because it is top-down. Um, but would like, like I said, we'll look into changing the location, changing the character, because what I wanted to do was look at the potential of using, and I don't see any reason to use the top-down template whatsoever. It probably would end up being better starting with a blank template and just creating my own character from scratch, because it just... Anytime you're dealing with other people's stuff, you have to fold your way of thinking to wrap it around how they're doing it and it's not always the best way so creating your own stuff I mean if you created your own character I mean blueprint class and character um, my tune whatever and created we don't have anything here so we've got a component of a cube and that's my character we have our character movements and all that stuff right here. What happens if I just did that and start right now and we'll just delete this character from the screen, hit play, we'll use a random spawn. So we can see we have our full control here, but what happens when we have no key bindings or anything set up whatsoever for WASD and none of that? So what if I came over here to my world settings and just whatever top down character let's actually try my tune I hit play and I have no camera I have nothing set up in there so let's actually create a spawn point there is no player well there is a player spawn right there so let's actually move the player spawn to here Hit play. You can see we have the box. There is no camera. There's a mouse cursor. So we need the camera to be at a component. Camera. And rotate it down. So we're still using the, the top down stuff. So what if we did that? So it works. You know, we don't have the cursor because it wasn't added in. 
Um, let's move the camera back even more. So we do have here, I can see I have a, a grayed out cursor. None of our key bindings or anything else we did in the other um, character work. So this is still doing its thing. We don't have any WASD controls in here. Um, this is just top down, clicking in. Let's actually, since this is upside down, grab our player character and rotate 180. Sorry, it was bugging me that the letters were upside down. Um, we do have a basic set of collisions. So whatever we wanted to set for our, our character right there, we have no animations because we haven't set up a regular character. I like the idea of moving my camera back and forth with a mouse wheel. Um, but we have a basic character. We don't have to worry about um, anything else. All of our movement is still controlled via the regular um, key bindings in the project settings. So that's our character. Completely ugly. Doesn't matter. We don't have any facing. We don't have any rotation. We don't have anything special. So whatever I left click, our cube doesn't rotate. So if I grab from this guy this stuff right here and just copy it and paste it in now as you notice we don't have that um, variable oh no that variable doesn't exist Right click. If we do it that way, what happens? We're still not facing. So, yay. It don't lack a that whatsoever. So, we're going to dump that. Um, do you want to go back in and change my test object break that we want it to stay forever then we don't have the cursor so we're not able to pull that information All right, that is techy as hell, but it works. All right, just for shits and grins, let's go ahead and do um, left, no, we gotta do right mouse button. Right mouse button, because it doesn't like me using the same left because it was bound earlier. So on our right mouse button, let's, um, Get player controller. Same basic principle. Um, get hit result under cursor by channel. Hmm. Break hit results. And for right now, let's do print text. I want to print it out and say, okay, this is what that location is. Impact point. It'll automatically convert to text. So now if I right mouse button, it's going to print out that information. So we have that. We have target location. If we did a line trace, it would be a lot easier for, probably for aiming, but we do have a 
at least something. We can report back that information when we right click. All right, I'll worry about the rotation and stuff later on. Um, we actually have another character. What I initially was looking at for this video was, okay, I'm going to move here, and it moves there. But also, when I get there, I want to be able to have an idea of placing an object, spawning an object at that location that does not move. Um, again, we could do a um, blueprint, actor... It's going to be blah. We're going to spawn blah. We're going to add a component. Cube. Well, whatever. Let's add a... Um, Sphere. And just because I have nothing else better to do, we'll add a friggin' light on top of that. And we'll make it red. Zero and zero. And dump that. We can spawn actor from class. Blah. Need our transform. So we'll break a transform, or make transform, and location B, impact point. So now, right click and we can spawn one. Again, blah. Let's on begin play, let's turn off visibility from start. We'll grab our point light and set visibility to true. Just so we have something to screw around with here. Now let's actually go ahead and do um, set life span. We'll throw that in between there. Ten seconds. Then see if that interferes here. But uh, what we'll do is we'll set our point light to come on. We'll have a delay 0.5 and we'll turn it back off set one more delay in we'll create an infinite loop do that thing and poof gone okay I 
absolutely pointless. But these are items that don't have physics. We can't go through them. We have to go around them. So just kind of simply that, okay, this is our character. We've created a building, and that's going to allow us to start creating, okay, it gathers resources, things of that nature. You, know, you wouldn't want to put a lifespan on the house or building or whatever else, but the concept is basically getting started with a top-down, using it for creating an RTS-type game where... Yeah, I'm just putting a flashing light on her just for show and tell there. I'm sure you can do something with a static item. Creating our own character. Yeah, you can keep with a third person character. I've actually gone in and brought in the Cinti Studio stuff. And we'll go back to our other top down character. So, I've replaced this, the UE4 mannequin, with uh, Cine Studios characters, and being able to run around as their characters looks a lot better. By having their assets in, you get all the crap you need for making a cool map. I mean, if you want to use the farm map, or the farm pack, or one of the other packs, I mean, they got some really good assets. So... If you wanted to create a single player top down game, grab one of their asset packs, grab all of them, shit, I got them all. But um, all except for the two that haven't made it to freaking Unreal yet. But as you can say, you can take one of the houses. You can shrink the assets down and use them. Uh, you could use the minis. Um, they actually look pretty good as well. Um, it would probably be pretty good to use some of the minis for uh, this kind of stuff. Um, there is a good tutorial. Uh, let's see here. If you were to look at the Epic's, Epic's launcher itself, and I think it's in Learn... Come on, come on. We're going to get ready to get out of here because I'm done looking at this damn screen. Go sit outside, prop my feet up for a little bit. Uh, there was in here a turn-based uh, system. Uh, we got to scroll down a good ways. Um, turn-based strategy. So, if you were to go with this one right here, if you look, there's a video that goes with it, but if you look right there, you got the cloud image, you click on that, and if I'm not mistaken, it gives you the pro uh, the project files. Yeah. So, you're absolutely free there. Works with the, the current versions. Uh, so, check out this project as a foundation for square tile turn-based strategy games. So, if you want to create your own strategy game uh, based off of this, you could take this basic template and update it. There you go. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll add that. And I'll probably come back and take a look at it. Um, we'll create a new project with it. Watch videos. Skill is very skilled. Okay, that makes sense. Um, yeah, we'll take a look at it. It's free. Why not? So let's actually close this project down. Yeah, sure, why not? Save selected. Um, we'll create a project. And I may come back and do another video here shortly. More projects, turn based strategy. And sure, why not create? So I may come back and take a look at it. Um, take a quick peek. I'll take a peek at it see if it's worth doing a video on 
it's actually probably going to be a good candidate for swapping over to um, use with Cinti assets. I think that'd actually be pretty cool. Um, let's go back to our library and where are you? I created a project. I'm going to have to go back and do it again. Turn based strategy. Created a project already. Let me take a peek, see where, where it is. Documents. Unreal projects. Yeah, I see it right there. A turn based strategy. Oh, there it is right there. All right, so I'm going to fire that up, take a look at it, and um, if it looks cool, we'll see about doing a um, a conversion to uh, Cindy Studios assets. Replace the floor tiles, the walls, the characters. Um, we'll take a peek. All right, so I'm going to let it do its thing. I'm going to take a break for a little bit, and uh, if you guys want to check back here shortly, I'll start up another stream probably, if if I like it. And then um, we'll see what it's going to take to actually change the characters over and that kind of stuff. I'm um, pretty sure it's just going to use standard uh, uh, animations. Let's actually look at the animations folder. Yep, idle, jump. Yeah, it's just standard uh, third-person animations. Um well, it looks like they're holding a weapon. Hmm. Ooh, it's old mannequin. That's the idol. Uh, let's see. As always, shitty damn thing. Main window. <sighs> Loading and saving. Disable autosave. Thank you. So yeah, this is um the old Manny. Um What happens if I just hit play? What the hell is my character? Mouse wheel, I can scroll out. A nice slow flashlight effect there. WSD, yep. So you would think as a character you'd start here far enough away from everything. Or here, maybe, or wherever. But do we have a player character? All right. Well, like I said, I'll take a look at it. Get units, unit blueprint. Wow, timeline. Yeah, there's a lot of shit in there. Um, but looking TBS game, 
player pawn. Okay. It's actually a low default map. Um, is it creating a procedurally generated map? Three unit unit four. Ah, so I got to click on the unit. Alright, so I guess that's him out of move. Alright, so it lights up to say, okay, that's as far as you can go. So I guess it's um I guess all else fails, read the damn instructions, right? So what is like the end of turn Well let's see. X key team zero reset. Oh, well. No idea. Now, let's see here. An AI behavior tree. Yeah, I, I don't understand this. So I'll, I'll take a look at it. See if it's something that's um, worth fiddle farting around with. No distro. What is that? HUD, classes, units. Yep, there's a lot of stuff in here. See, that's standard UE4 Manny. Skiller, parameter values, set hidden in game. Movement test. There's just way too much open in here. Um, move to action, set speed, turn reset, deal basic damage, okay, adjust tile, add actor local rotation, yeah, that's what we should have been looking at earlier, um, construction script, Holy shit, Spackle. Uh, that's a lot of spaghetti. And event craft. That's kind of what I wanted to look at right there. Uh, event tech. Wow. All that shit's running off of event tick. Mm. Somebody actually put some time into it, that's for sure.
do move. Set speed, set play rate, set facing. Uh, that's what the hell we were looking for earlier. Whew, that's a lot of shit in there. That is some old shit. Some old file stuff in there. So we just got the one map, the one player, basic terrain, arrows. You know, I don't even know what the hell you're supposed to do with it. Interesting, though. I mean, it's something definitely to look into for future playing around with. Forward and right. So, yeah, that's your your basic movement. W-A-S-D. There are no action mappings. Yeah, not going to worry about it. It's cool, though. Um, but if you haven't explored the learn area, like I said, if it's got a cloud next to it, then you can download the project files. Spatial Audio Temple, you can download that project and look at it. Content Examples is good. Chaos Destruction Demo, I have not seen yet. It's, um, you need to have 4.23 installed, and I don't. Um, but if you've got 4.23, then you can check out that. It, some cool stuff. And like most stuff that they do for development wise of Unreal Engine is that's going to be used in that shit fart night. Um, yeah. Virtual camera, not bad to look at. Um, I haven't looked at this. Virtual studio, I haven't really seen much of a use for it yet. Some, some weird plugins. Uh, you got to add like five different plugins to be able to get it to somewhat work and it's kind of screwed up my install version and yeah I'm just whatever composure framework I haven't looked at or sequencer infiltrator demo um, might be worth looking at water planes you could use stuff from these in your projects you just have to, to read the fine print on some of them particle effects Really cool. Um, Stylish rendering, realistic rendering. That one looks good. That's actually a good good project to look at. It's a big one, but good to look at. Um, multiplayer shootout. It's kind of the basics of a, a multiplayer game. It, it doesn't really get you into a real good setup for the matchmaking of getting your friends to join you. That's why I ended up creating the um, the template that I use. That's actually not bad. It's uh, decent to play around with. Um, I haven't played with this all that much, but it's free. So, action RPG looks really nice. Um, they've kind of thrown a challenge out there to get you to take that and run with it and, and finish it out as a game. I mean, it'll work on Android, and I guess if you have that Apple garbage shit, you use it on there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, making a mobile game. A lot of people want to do mobile games, and I'm, I'm, I, maybe I'm just old, I don't give a shit about mobile games. I play Solitaire on my phone, and that's it. That's only when I'm taking a shit, but, you know, I don't see using your cell phone as a serious gaming platform. It's something to do while you're taking a dump, or waiting at a doctor's office, or whatever. It's not a serious gaming platform, and it shouldn't be viewed as one. So, yeah, if you want a game, get on a frickin' PC. If you got to, and you've never seen a vagina before, then you can get a console. Um, shooter game pretty cool 
Um, well worth checking out. But one last thing before I check out of here. That's actually kind of cool, too. Um, go to Epic Games. Yay, Fortnite. I don't give a shit. Um, store. Scroll down in the store. And yes, there's lots of cool features in here. Um, it's a free trial weekend for Division 2. I've already got the full game, so... Um, but if you want to try it out for free, you could do that, and then have to uninstall it, because, it, you know, if you don't end up getting it. Um, if you want to be a douchebag goose, check out that one. Uh, the whole point of coming in here was checking out the free games. And kind of need to scroll down a little bit. You can go back from the home and do it that way as well. But as you scroll through, there are a bunch of games that are in here. Um, one that's ending today was Surviving Mars. few little minor bugs in it, but I'm tell you what, it will murder your time. It will take time out of your life. You'll sp spend four or five hours in that stupid game, and I say that in a good way, um, you'll dump four or five hours in there, and then you'll be like, uh, what the hell? It's been four or five hours, you know. Surviving Mars is back to being paid. 30 bucks. 30 bucks. Um, yeah, I, I got it. Well, you can't see, but the icon right there. Because the icon's on a different monitor. I got it while it was free. If you look, Surviving Mars right there. Um, six gigabyte install. It's a good game. Um, I'm glad I got it free. Um, Unreal Tournament is always free. Get the damn thing. It's a freaking cool game. Okay, so... Um, this week, it is... Um, Alan Wake's American Nightmare is supposed to be free right now, as is Observer. I have no idea what that is. Um, but, yeah, it's now available free until October 24th. And this, um, American Nightmare, which is like a zombie-ish survival game. Um, you fight your evil doppelganger, the Herald of Darkness. Grab Alan Wake's Nightmare free on Epic Games for a limited time. I'm not sure how long that limited time is going to be. Uh, the other one is till the 24th. But it doesn't look horrible. Uh, it doesn't look bad. Uh, it doesn't look like my kind of gameplay. So, it, But it's free. Grab it if you want. Unreal Tournament is definitely a free game on here that if you haven't played it and you're into first-person shooters... Freaking get it. I, I may actually just do a video with me being on my soapbox ranting about something while playing that game. I'll, if I get bored, want to play, just do something to kill some time with, I'll get on that game. I'll set it to max number of bots on easy setting and just go mash bots for a little while. You can up, up the skill levels on them and they are a decent challenge. Um, even if you put them on all the way down on the lowest, they're still not stupid. They'll still give you a decent fight. But, the um, thing is, you can get the original UT editor to go along with it. And, yes, I already have Subnautica on Steam, but for a short time, Subnautica was free on the Epic, uh, Epic Launcher. So, I just got it just in case for some reason something happens to my Steam account. I have something to fall back on. Yes, the Arc Editor, Conan Editor. I don't give a shit about Fortnite. But the UT Editor will allow you to create your own maps for the game. Um, replace th stuff in there. I would imagine if you want to spend the time, you could probably switch out all the characters and make your own version of Umbrella. You can't release Umbrella Tournament 
Cinti edition, or you, you can't do an asset flip on that one. But yeah, read right into it. it. It's a good fun game to play, but you good if you wanted to change out the characters or add weapons in, do a weapons pack, what have you, make your own mod, and up, upload those mutators or mods in the game and be able to use them in the game. <coughs> All right. I've had enough of this shit. I'm getting out of here. Thanks for the people who stopped by, and we shall see y'all later.